Hello and welcome to Photo Walkthrough. My name is John Arnold and this is Tutorial 8, Chapter 4. Right, uh, well, and unusually for me, I don't have any announcements this week, uh, except to say that I'm still co-hosting that workshop and I believe there's still a space or two left. So if you're interested, please do sign up. But uh, without any further ado, I'm going to leap straight into editing the photo today. So you'll recall that we've been working on this uh, grab map flower and we've been working so far on this blue version of it which has come up rather nicely um, now what we need to do is produce two more versions of this flower in different colors so that we can produce our triptych so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate this image now if you haven't up to this point already saved the file and obviously having been taking place over three weeks I have been saving this file but if you haven't do just do a save as now and save it somewhere sensibly and then once you've done that you can go into the image menu and hit duplicate and in this case it's just going to say what do we want to give it as a name so I'm just going to call flower one copy is fine so that's now got both the images the original image and a new copy of the image open and in this new copy of the image I'm going to do what I always do I like to work full screen as you can see so with that image selected I'm going to press the F key on my keyboard that takes us full screen and I'll just zoom in remember I'm zooming in with my scroll wheel on my on my mouse and that's settable in the preferences if that doesn't work for you by default so here's our image and the beauty of having done all this work on this image so far we've still got all these layers this new duplicated image that I've produced has got all those existing layers in it um, and I can just go into our gradient map now so that's our gradient map layer and I double click on this first icon that's the layer, map, layer mask remember this icon here allows us to change the settings so if I double click that it opens up our gradient map now I'm going to drag this somewhere so that we can see the image behind it and if I double click on the gradient itself it opens the gradient editor and the first color I had in mind I'm going to start in the middle here remember the way these colors work we've got our two background colors here and then we've got the color that's appearing around the tips of our pe petals here and then we've got the color that's going to appear in the main brightest part of the petals there and the yellow of course comes from the original image and the yellow is going to be consistent through all three of the of the images in the uh, uh, in the triptych so I'm going to start just by editing the blue and I'm going to go for a really bright red and as you can see we've chosen a color right up in the top right corner here remember the way this works we've got le less saturated colors down here more saturated colors up here and we've got darker and brighter up here from bottom to top so that top right corner is the most saturated brightest red we can pick so I'm going to press OK and you can see we've got our red around the top there and I'm going to choose of the darker two colors in our background I'm going to go for some sort of orangey colors here so maybe a little bit more red than that I want a fairly saturated color but fairly dark it's kind of browny it's just a little bit more red in there okay can't really see how this is going to look until I do this final color I'm just double clicking on the color, mar color markers on this strip here by the way and I'm going to choose a slightly more orangey color there and this is going to need to be a little bit lighter still fairly saturated so saturated is to the right lighter is towards the top so that's looking pretty good those are the right kinds of colors it's a little bit too light at the moment so what I'm going to do is I'm going to see this marker between the lighter color and the darker color I'm going to just drag that marker a little bit to the left and as I do that you can see the background we're getting a different distribution of colors the background now I think that darker color needs to be quite a lot darker than that still fairly saturated even more red in there I don't want to go fully red but I do want to keep the colors somewhere near the red around the, pet the end of the petals and I think that's looking pretty good about there so just tweak that curve there the, the gradient there so that it looks right press OK on that press OK on that and I think that's a pretty good first stab at that particular image so let's save that I'll save that as flower red you can see I've already been working on this and then we want to do the same thing again just give it a moment while it saves we're going to do image duplicate 
and once again we get a window up I'm going to press the F key to go full screen spacebar and drag that up into a nice working place and once again I'm going to double click on my gradient and once again I'm going to open my gradient editor and this time we're going for a nice bright magenta purple at the ends of the flowers somewhere closer to blue than to red yeah about there's good and then going back up the three colors that we're going to edit here I want something even closer to blue for this one something fairly dark and then here we're going to go for a slightly lighter but slightly less saturated than that around about there Oops, I hit the save button there by accident um, you can save these gradients this is probably not a very useful gradient you're probably not going to want to use this one again so I wouldn't normally save this but you can see I do have some gradients there that I use quite often there's a sort of a blue duotone, a green duotone a sort of a sandy brown duotone and I do quite a lot of duotone images as you've seen on the show so I have those gradients saved and I can use them again but I pretty much always tweak them I pretty much always come in here and, and mess with these sliders to get the the distribution of the colors where I want them so even though the colors are the same you quite often mess around and drag these sliders up and down a little bit so pressing OK on those that's our purple flower and once again we want to save that I'll save that as flower purple so yes to that and that's our three different images produced now if I press F a couple of times and get back to the window mode just zoom that back out minimize these right we've got our three images now first things first we need to make ourselves a triptych and we need to know how big each of these images is so going back into one of our images if we go to image image size that opens the image size window which tells us that our image size is 1741 pixels square so I'm going to copy that, cancel it, and I'm just going to fire up a calculator. And in the calculator, 1741 times 3, 5,223. So, file, new. Okay, you can see I've been working on this before, 5,223 pixels, wide. 1741 pixels high because we want it three times the width and only one times the height press OK and that gives us our triptych that we're going to copy into now with one of our flowers selected let's start with I want the orangey one on the left so starting with our orangey one I'm going to come to the top of my layers so on my layers palette I'm going to click on the top one and I've showed you this before control alt uh, shift N, Control Alt Shift E on a Mac, and Command Option Shift N, Command Option Shift E, makes a new layer, copies everything that's visible into that new layer, and then with that new layer selected, so we've, you can see at the top here, we've got uh, our, just that, just all our image data all sort of flattened into that one layer. It's not flattened; we've still got all the layers behind it, but essentially what it's done is it's flattened it, copied it into a new layer, and then unflattened it. Um, so with that layer selected, Control A to select all and then copy that and in here control V to paste it and with our move tool which you can select by pressing the V key just drag that to the left and it will snap nicely to the end now with our blue flower selected same thing again select the top layer in our layers palette control, op control alt shift N control alt shift E copies everything and this time I'm just going to do it slightly differently just to show you that it, as with all things in Photoshop there's a hundred different ways of doing everything I'm going to click on the flower with my move tool I'm just going to drag it into the other window and you can see that's copied everything in that layer into that new window there one of the things that's slightly annoying here if I just zoom in you can see if I zoom out 
Photoshop is showing us that as though there's a gap at the side there. If you zoom right in, if I if you double click your zoom tool, you can see it's actually perfect. That when you double click your zoom tool, by the way, it takes you to 100%. Right, and you can see that's that's nicely butted up. And the other thing is, right at the bottom here, it was showing us having a bit of a gap at the bottom as well. Which, if you zoom in 100%, double click on your zoom tool, all the way to the bottom, you can see it's actually perfect. So this is this is just to do with the way Photoshop is representing uh, a shrunk down view of the image. If you're not sure whether or not something is butted up against the other things properly, just zoom in all the way to 100%, and that's 100% view is is the real view of how it really looks. Anyway, with our final flower, same thing again. Top layer, Control Alt Shift N, Control Alt Shift E, and with our Move tool, click, pressing V on the keyboard, just click and drag over to here, and drag that until it snaps into place. And once again, it's showing as though we've got a space at the end, but we haven't. And that there is our final flower triptych image. So if I was to save that, save as flower triptych, flower triptych one, and give that a moment. Now, there's one other thing I wanted to show you. As you can see, this layer here has got three, sorry, this image that we've just created, the triptych, has got three layers, and each layer is just a bitmap layer, so if I was to turn off the two other layers, we've just got the purple bitmap of that flower in there, just the blue, just the red. If I wanted to have this represent the contents of the other three files, and have it actually linked to those other three files, I can do that. Let me just close those down. Yes, I will say flower one. And give it a moment. No, I won't save that. No, I won't save that. Right, so I'm going to close that one. And let's make a new, another new one. And it was 5223 image pixels wide. Press OK. Now this time, Photoshop CS2 has got this ability in it called Smart Objects. So if I go File, Place, it opens a file browser, which allows us to search for the file that we want to place. And remember, we wanted the red one on the left, so flower red, place. And now what it's doing is it's opening the red flower file off disk, and it's going to show us, let me just go full screen, oh no, I can't while it's doing that. Um, it's showing us the contents of that red flower, uh, and it's allowing us to place it. I could resize it if I wanted, but I don't want to. I just want to place it at the left hand end there. When you're happy with it, this is just like free transform. Press return, and that will give us the final image. I'm just going to press F so we're working back at full screen. You know I like to work on full screen mode. And I'm just going to do the same thing again with the other two. So flower blue goes in the middle. Place that. It's opening the blue flower image now. And that's coming nicely right in the middle as it is. But it's got this nice snap to edge functionality, so I'm just going to make sure it is snapped in place nicely. And finally, flower purple. Now the joy of having used the file place is that that is using smart objects. It's not actually um, taking the bitmap data and pasting the bitmap data into this image. It's taking the other file, opening it, looking at what it looks like, and then showing us a representation of what that file looks like in here. But I can, again, we've got three layers. We've got a red layer, a blue layer, and a purple layer, just like before. If, however, I wanted to go in and modify that red, I think the, the orange behind looks a little bit brown and slightly muddy. So if I want to go in and modify that, that red, I can double click. I, I double clicked on the icon there, just to the left of flower red, and it's now saying it's opening a smart object. When I'm done, do a file save to commit the changes, and the changes will be reflected back here. So let's try that. Press OK, and it's opened the file that we've placed. And I'm just going to go into my gradient map, and just like before, only this time I'm going to add 
a little bit more red in the background there. Maybe add a little bit more saturation in the background as well. Okay, on that. Let's darken that one down and a little bit more saturation. And once again, a little bit more red. So, pressing OK on those things. And if I go into my history, you can see that that's changed that quite a lot. It's just brought the background up a little bit more punchy. Perhaps still a little bit dark. Let's go back to the gradient map. And in here, just drag that blender a little bit to the right, just to lighten it a little bit. And press OK and OK. Right, that's my final version of the red. Remember what it told us to do? It remember, told us to do a file save. So I'm going to do file, save. And when I do that, it knows that, that that image behind is linked to it. So if we give it a moment, that image behind now has been updated with the version that we've just been working on. You can see that's just gone a little bit darker in the background, a little bit more saturated in the background. So that's a way of producing a final triptych file that is linked back to the three flowers that you've been working on so that you can go back and edit them and have it reflected back here automatically. Quite a useful capability. Now one final thing, um, something I've never shown you before, but it's an important part of photography and that's printing. And I'm going to just go File. Now print with preview. I like to do print with preview and this is why. Right, right away you can see here that this file that I'm printing is just sort of stuck in the middle. It's small and the reason for that is if you go to my image size, in fact if you go to my canvas size, although this image is 5,000 pixels wide, it's set to a width of 3 inches and a height of 1 inch. And when you come to print, if you just went to the print option there, it would print it that size because that's the size you've told it it is. It doesn't, the, the, the actual physical size in inches of or centimeters of the picture you've got stored in Photoshop doesn't have any bearing on the number of pixels in it. So I could, if I wanted, resize it to say it's six inches wide. And if I told it not to not to interpolate the pixels, it would still have the same number of 5,223 pixels wide. So what I'm going to do, just to show you printing, uh, I don't propose to get very deeply into printing. This is a very big subject. So I'm just going to open our flower one, our blue flower image that we've been working on all along. And I'm going to do File, Print with Preview. Now, as I said, the reason I like Print with Preview is because you can see the paper here on the left. You can see how big this image is going to print. And you just saw me turn it off there. In this case, I want to print it as large as I can. And I don't, I don't care about how big it's going to come out. I happen to know that the printer I'm using here prints uh, 6x4, um, and that's fine. It's going to be 4 inches across. So I'm going to turn on Scale to Fit Media. And you can see it's automatically calculating the size as 3.9 inches um, wide and 3.9 inches high. And that is all I really propose to show you about printing now, except to say that when you come into the print, do the print for print with preview, check what you're going to get here. You'll save yourself a lot of paper and ink if you make sure that the print with preview looks right before you press the print button up here. And then, of course, you get the print dialog. And I'm going to choose my printer and press OK. I have this very small Canon selfie printer that's very handy for producing fun little prints. It's a dye sublimation printer which can give good results, but the maximum size it prints is just 6x4, which is the same as regular prints from a lab. Obviously I wouldn't recommend one of these for gallery prints or prints for framing and hanging on a wall, but if you want to take your photo off the screen and hold it in your hand, then it's pretty useful. At some point I'm going to buy a nice photo printer. I've got my eye on the Epson R2400, but I can't afford that yet. Until then, whenever I want to produce a print for the wall, I'll just keep using one of the many excellent online printing labs. So, here we are, printing off one of our flower images. There it is, and as you can see it's on this 6x4 card, so I just need to trim off the white at the top and bottom. And that gives us a nice square print like that. And a while back I found in a, store, in a store some little crocodile clips with these Perspex blobs on the ends. 
and the colours reminded me so much of the flowers that I just had to make up three of them. There's the blue one with a nice blue perspex blob on the end and here's the orange one and finally the purple one and I think that's just a fun little way to present the three flowered triptych image and I have that on my desk next to my monitor my little Photoshop flower garden so there we are that's everything for this image next week with a little luck I'll have something new for you I'll be covering an image produced by another photographer and if I can figure out how to record a Skype conversation by then I might even have a short interview with them to talk about how the image was produced I'm really excited about trying something new and I hope you'll look forward to that as well as always, remember you can view all the old Photo Walkthrough shows at our website, photowalkthrough.com, and you're welcome to mail me with any questions or comments at photowalkthrough at gmail.com. And there are still a few postcards left if you'd like one. I've sent them literally all over the world now. Only yesterday I put one in the post to Argentina. So drop me an email with your postal address if you'd like one, and I'll get them sent right out to you. Okay, thanks for watching, and I will catch you next week.